Welcome to Viperfish Island, where your fishing experience will give you nightmares. For this idyllic setting possesses a terrifying monster just beneath the waves. If you want to see how this diorama was created, then stay tuned. This is my first resin diorama for Thalassophobia, and it contained a whole load of problems from start to finish. The journey was not so much as an adventure, but a battle of determination and creativity just to get the project finished. So it'd be great to know what you think about it. Please watch to the end and leave feedback. I do respond to every comment, eventually. Unless, of course, you're going to swear, then I can't be bothered. But your thoughts, whether they're positive or negative about the project, are really important. It started with 3D sculpting and modeling Blender, which I'm still trying to get to grips with since my last video for the wood turning of the Monster Energy Can diorama. Then it's onto 3D printing using a transparent filament, and this I felt was important to use rather than clay, as you'll see later. And for those that have been following my previous 3D printing attempts, hopefully you'll be rejoicing. The printing quality has finally improved with very little stringing that I had before. I finally figured out what setting I should have actually been using. However, after eight hours of fairly frequent checking, the filament must have jammed and the top part of the Viper fish was missing, as were the fins. Not a major problem, I just learned how to slice and keem a model and then printed replacement head and fins. As you've just seen, the eyes and along the belly was covered with masking tape, which will allow light to pass through the viper fish after painting to give that bioluminescent effect. This process, in fact, like the whole project, took such a long time to complete. There's a lot happening in my life right now, which requires my attention to be focused elsewhere. Once assembled, the printed viper fish is base coated and then sanded to remove as many of those print lines as possible. Now I know there are several methods for achieving this, but if you have a tried and trusted way, then please let me know in the comments below. FDM printing is great for prototyping, but the quality of finish is poor and becomes really noticeable, especially for small scale items. As you'll see a bit later on, the details on the island are a one to 250 scale. So a seven millimeter tall figurine is going to look terrible when it's viewed up close from an FDM print. It's obvious that I do need a 3D resin printer, but my laptop blew up and it needed replacing. So that taking priority, I have to start saving all over again. Now maybe there's a resin printer company out there that would graciously donate a 4K system to my ongoing work. Just get in touch. The Viperfish is airbrushed with some degree of care although it looks like I was throwing paint on. In fact, my handling was a little bit careless, leading to a painted fingertip smudge on the model. But then it was on to hand painting the rest. I black inked all around the scales and around the eyes, just to give that a little bit of contrast. Then decided to give the teeth some highlights and lowlights, as they'll become something that I hope will represent the bark of palm trees. Once the painting was completed, I then removed all the masking tape and applied a blue ink around the edges to cover any revealed base coat. The throat of the viperfish was sealed with a transparent filament printed disc, which will then form the so-called deep fishing pool. I then tested the main feature, which was the bioluminescence of the viperfish, which I thought was spot on. Now I know I didn't print the dorsal fin spine, and on reflection I could have possibly used some optical fibre to get that bioluminescent effect extended away from the body. 
The base was made from styrofoam or a polystyrene foam, which was sealed, base coated and airbrushed with acrylics. Now for all the extra detailing that I put in, you know, the dry brushing, the coral pieces, it was all for naught. The colouring of the base and the modelling moss was completely blocked by the intensity of the dye that I used in the resin. Now of course I wouldn't realise that until it was far too late. If you've ever worked with large quantities of resin before, then you've probably faced and conquered all these problems. This was my first time, so I had to encounter them right from the beginning. So I had built the resin mold with far too thin sheets of acrylic, and I initially thought it would be absolutely fine um, to contain the epoxy resin without any problems. And I tried pouring three kilograms of resin, which is the last use I've ever tried. Um, the problem was it either led to an exothermic runaway uh, or it was just a mini heat wave in the southeast of England. I just couldn't keep the piece uh, cool enough and the test piece was ruined, so I had to turn to using layers. Now I'd waited for each layer to gel um, before I poured the next one, but in trying to determine this moment when also having to go out to work each day meant leaving it slightly too long and the layers are somewhat obvious in the final piece. I couldn't start the whole project again. I was weeks behind schedule and it took about a month to get to this point. And I'd used the last of my resin on this project so all the savings I had had just gone into this new computer. So there really was no option for going back and trying to solve these issues. I decided not to show a particular sequence I'd used to take care of the bulging resin. I didn't find the look of it appealing, so I decided to cut off all the sides with a bandsaw, then wet sanded it to 5000 grit. When assembling the final parts for the diorama, I realised that this scale of 1 to 250 was just a little bit too small for me. That it was just so difficult to be able to sand anything that small. It would have been disastrous. So I think the lack of detail uh, is probably one of the biggest letdowns of this project. The other problem with a 1 in 250 scale when you are printing small scale objects is trying to position them. They are an absolute pain. I wanted a water effect on the surface of this diorama, but I didn't want it to only involve crashing waves so I tried a stippling effect with a sponge and then dry brushing on top. And after that, I used a blue ink to seep into the valleys. My impression is that I should not have dry brushed it. I should have left it well alone, but alas, too late. Now we get into the final diorama shots. I deliberately didn't show the close-ups as I think it would have distracted from the overall theme and I really wanted to get across the concept of thalassophobia as I saw it using a zombie-like viperfish. But there we have it, an idyllic island setting complete with a fishing person, a rod, a rowboat and oars with the viperfish below. It took a long time and a lot of energy to complete this project, and I'm glad I pushed through the barriers that I faced. And I'm moderately happy with how it turned out. But I really wanna know what you think of the project. Please comment down below and let me know whether you liked it. And if you did, why not subscribe to the channel? Until next time, take care.